welcome to the STOA. Uh, today we have Elaine Stefani here with us. Uh, Elaine is um, a Berlin-based best-selling author, speaker, and researcher on how to shift collective paradigms and unlearn cultural conditioning to gain back our natural orgasmic aliveness. Uh, her book, Skin and Games, What Sex Work Taught Me About Love, uh, is about her experience as a sex worker in Berlin and what she learned about uh, human nature, our culture, and its secrets from doing so. So uh, Elan is visiting the STOA today to discuss embodiment and sexuality along with its global dimensions um, and how it's gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna tag in uh, Elan in a moment and um, she's basically kind of gonna take over the STOA temporarily uh, and gonna share her thoughts and engage in some exercises. And then when it comes to the Q and A portion, um, uh, uh, we're gonna tag team the, the, the questions, but uh, Anytime, if you have any questions, put them in the chat, uh, and then one of us will call on you to unmute uh, yourself, and you can ask your question to Elan directly. Um, and everyone, feel free to turn on their camera. Let there be light in the STOA. Um, that being said, uh, Elan, welcome to the STOA. And I, I muted you again, so you, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Yay, check. OK. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's always magic, like being invited to a virtual space and then people are coming in and a whole new atmosphere is coming in. And I feel I feel super privileged and excited. Uh, yeah, stepping into the space that all of you, I think, together have, have continued to build on, to feed, to, um, to create together. Thank you. And I'm aware of the fact that um, me coming from embodiment and trauma research and um, life force explosions maybe, or at least my curiosity about that, and then meeting the stoic philosophy is such a fruitful field. It's so, so fruitful. So uh, I was in... Um, I was excited even more when it was about discussing different topics that I could cover this evening and embodied sexuality is kind of allergen because it covers it all. I think us talking about sexuality is us talking about creation, is us talking about aliveness and what to do with our aliveness. So what a beautiful topic to get to know each other in and to, to unlearn some cultural kind of confusion or stress. Um, this is not me just covering what I want to say and you are listening there and then you are muted and then you are saying, okay, thank you so much. I'm embodied. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's way more something where I invite all of us to co-create or to go into exploration together. However, I would um, take the lead for the moment uh, covering a little bit of my background, my intentions for the evening, and then we see where it goes from there. Um, because to some extent, even though the topic is so powerful, embodied sexuality, at the same time, it's so absurd that we talk about that. Just because, why is my body existing? Because my parents had sex. I mean, sexuality is creating bodies. It's creating life on earth. So it's so weird that we as humans end up in the situation of talking about embodied sexuality. because. There is only one reason why anything for you or for me can become disembodied slash dissociated. And that is an unpleasant, overwhelming situation or experience in your body slash trauma. So we are talking directly about collective and maybe individual sexual trauma when we talk about embodied sexuality. We are not talking about some kind of neotentric love, light, and fun, and I open my heart center, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We are talking about, ladies and gentlemen, what has happened? What has happened to the moment that gave birth to all of us? Like what? What happened to us, and when? And I ideally hope, of course, when I talk about sexual trauma, 
is that you yourself in your very body are not directly personally hit by sexual trauma. I am personally hit by sexual trauma. I know that the majority of people is hit by sexual trauma in this very lifetime. Uh, in most cases, also in early childhood, going way beyond, beyond uh, childhood abuse or child abuse. However, we are coming as the sons and da daughters of a traumatizing and a traumatized culture to this evening. And all of that is written in our nervous system. It's written in our genes. It's written in this very moment. How I speak is written also in terms of inherited, passed on sexual trauma. So as always, when it is about trauma or disembodiment, we have the <laughs> kind of idea in the background of, I can collapse, I can break down, I can give up, I can focus on something else than an orgasmic sex life. Or we can awaken the even more. Or we can sharpen our senses and sharpen our mind. In my experience, intelligence, which is also something so crucial for philosophy, love for truth. It can become so easily something so stupid, something so unnecessary something so artificial, something so empty, soulless. Just because it happens from a disembodied state of let's talk about it in some kind of wise idea instead of sensing that I'm fucking scared of sex, that I'm ashamed, that I have no clue, that I constantly compare myself to others and think everybody else is better. So my invitation is, can we live up to a kind of embodied intelligence? I would say an intelligent intelligence by meeting in the field of wounds, meeting in the field of past. Where are you coming from? Where am I coming from? This so much more when it is about us, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, all of us secretly looking at what can I do in order to create a happier future? for my children, for my friends, for further generations. I'm, I'm very much busy with this question to some extent day and night and would love to sleep a little bit deeper and be a little bit less busy with how do we re-embody life back in our nervous system, back in our here and now, back in the point or in the back in the field, the unity, where transcendence and biology meet, where flesh and blood and woundings and the mind and the brilliance and the genius meet. I'm interested in that. I'm interested in us sitting here, moving here, shivering here tonight in the field of woundings, where we are living up to a whole body intelligence that has been written in us that is bigger than what I perceive as my IQ or anything like that with my whole nervous system since billions of years. Something so practical, resting, unlearning the artificial stuff, unlearning, forgive me my wording, the mindfuck, and relaxing into the intelligence that's just the pulse in my veins. And the brilliance of my thoughts. And also when it comes to embodiment and sex, the immense wisdom and depth of sexual knowledge that we have. Not by reading books. I won't share any techniques just because I'm very, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. There is also this projection on ex sex workers or sex workers. Oh, they are so... They are so experienced and they have no problems with sex and insects and everything like that. And it's like, let's stop this comparison. It's just so wrong anyway. It's just such an unnecessary disembodied comparison game anyway, not adding any pleasure to this planet. So what are we doing in order to embody our sexuality? I think amongst it all, what I could say about that, it comes down to unlearning the sexual stuff that you learned, 
but that you forgot that you have learned it. Unlearning what you think is sex. What you think is your sexuality, your personal, private sexuality. All of that is so much more something that has been put into us, into you, into me, just because we are open, just because we are sensitive, just because we are this immense, brilliant intelligence in our body. So unlearning that, it's almost like listening to the wisdom that is speaking underneath the frequency of your ears. But it is whispering. It's whispering in a language without words, in an unspoken voice or in unspoken words. Things like that might frame it better. And it's speaking especially in movement. The oldest movement on earth um, being invented by mammals for that is the whole body shaking. So I think we will do some kind of technique tonight in order to make our life more orgasmic. <laughs> Can't be a bad thing. And that is just whole body shaking. Also because I think we tap into the intelligence of creation slash sex um, in the very moment that we leave the limits or the limitations of the topics. So when it is about unlearning what you learned about sex and we want to do this work thoroughly, and I myself, just for my own sake, want to do this work so thoroughly, we, we have to kill sex at all or on the whole, just in order to, to make a rough cut, just in order to be thorough with our inquiry. What is sex? I think when we destroy sex, when we kill sex, when we delete sex, when we say, there is no sex, that's just a bad joke from a stressed out culture. You can relax, there is no sex. When there is something sexual, something ecstatic, something whole body orgasmic in this planet, know what? It has to survive on its own that you killed it. Something that's really dead just because you killed it is something that might have not existed in the first place. So if sex is something resilient, it will get up like phoenix from the ashes. And if not, we killed an illusion anyway. And an illusion can't be happy. An illusion can't be free. An illusion can't fly into truth. So let's forget about this topic. I could say embodied sexuality is just, can I be wounded? Can I be bleeding? And can I say the even louder and the even more yes to this lifetime? And yes to this lifetime is something I guess might have been easier a few decades or centuries ago. I have no idea. However, I perceive it as incredibly challenging meeting you in these very challenging times. So I'm very much into, can I say yes to a world that's so obviously suffering? Can I say yes to not numbing out around the suffering and not collapsing when the suffering is hitting me? Can I wash in my nervous system with my whole body shaking the collective stress by at least starting with my individual stress? So that's you. And that's me starting with our individual sexual stress tonight by that embodying a blueprint for something that might serve the collective stress or waves of stress as well, just because they are affecting you anyway. I mean, contributing to collective stress detox is something egoistic, just because you yourself will sleep way better. And second of all, I think also this idea of these individuals and this private stuff and something that we talk about and something that we share and something that we do not share, et cetera, et cetera. This in itself, let's kill it. Let's kill it. Who gets happier from having to get along with your own secrets in shame and silence? And it's not about us sharing now what has happened, but it is about us opening our voice. <sighs> opening our nervous system, exhaling something 
that we stopped sensing and that still or the even more plays its role in the background. We might then realize our genitals feel a bit numb. When we have sex, it's a little bit like, okay, that's sex, can have sex, okay. But where is this ecstatic inspiration, this being in awe, this burning for truth that can come from sex? It can also come from dancing or just vibrating or giving birth to a child or just crying while your father is dying in your arms. It can come from wherever. But I think it's a wise fight to fight for the, for the exits from the collective trance, being trapped in functioning and getting along and understanding and discussing. Okay, so that's my, now when I reflect on what I said, embodied sexuality, yes, sounds for me like a lot of holistic sexuality. In fact, when I checked in with Peter around different topics that we could cover this evening, I was like, oh yes, embodied sexuality. And can I please also cover some kind of collective impact of an individual embodied sexuality? a quote-unquote individual. However, let's be egoistic. If this is just for you about your individual orgasmic aliveness, brilliant sex life, whatever, um, go for it. I think the more you do this work thoroughly, the more you are open for surprising yourself with the conductivity of your nervous system. Unlearning culture, unlearning culture, unlearning 6,000 years of culture. The more you do that, the more you won't be able to hinder your nervous system from also meeting collective stuff and contributing something to the collective blueprint of how do we make a vicious circle turn into an upward spiral? Because that is what it is about. Disembodiment is the vicious circle and it's the energy that on the other hand could serve us all the time for an upward spiral. So this is us meeting here bravely tonight. <laughs> looking out for ways of creating an upward spiral. So if I have no idea on so many levels, I can, I can say I can sense you, but who knows? I can't see an aura. I have no special Reiki or whatever training. I'm not in any way esoteric. So who knows? Maybe I'm completely off and just projecting. I have no idea about so many things in you or how this lands. So before I would love all of us to dive into one somatic sequence, it's just like a whole body shaking quickie. I'm super curious if there's anything where you have to scream stop in the chat and say, Elan, this is, um, sorry, this is so not store, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> okay, maybe Peter, you can, you might, um, you, you can maybe help me. And if, if everybody is okay, <laughs> we can also just go on. It's just that I want to make sure that I'm not having here my um, private Elon party and the rest is secretly suffering. Who knows? Oh, it's very stoa. Oh, wow. Thank you. Woo! Yay. That's, that's you made my evening. Thank you. You made my day. Bam. <laughs> mm. Oh, so sweet. Thank you, Flavius. And your, your Zoom cover when you are not visible, Flavius, is amazing. Wow. I was like, that's, that's interesting. Hmm. Fully integrate the fantasy imagination with embodiment, if you can do that. Is there a way to square these opposites? Square, square. Okay, cross, I think. Uh, invokes to me the opposite of disembodied sexuality which to me doesn't necessarily mean dissociation but also fantasy or the imaginal realm yes yes i mean totally i think disembodiment i come from trauma research and disembodiment is when a trauma therapy said somebody is disembodied it's like oh he's highly dissociated <laughs> so if you if you um have more um navigation or more thank you for the zoom cover again flavius um if you have more differentiation between those terms, that's beautiful. It's just for me, also because I come from so many layers of sexual trauma, I know so deeply on so many levels dissociation. I know up to my 18th um, 
year up up to my I think 19th birthday or something like that I would have never described myself as disembodied or dissociated because disembodiment shows up as ignorance you don't know you don't know what you don't know you don't know how vast life can be you don't know about the dimensions that you can sense so this disembodiment makes itself invisible to you so in that way when i say dissociated or disembodied i mean we are kind of saving our life or the rest of our life or survival mode over there being caught up in our head having no 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 connection to reality to what's going on around we are not in charge in terms of ta taking care for ourselves for anybody around etc I would say this cultural collective state of functioning and making ends meet. All of us on the collective level are trapped in a slightly, at least slightly disembodied state. So if you are enjoying your orgasmic waves or whatever, when it comes to fantasy and imagination, go for that. It's just, it's almost like, it's a wonderful inquiry around sex what does truly make me happy when it comes to sex? Which definition of sex makes me happy? Which definition of sex makes me grateful for being alive? Which concept, which image, which fantasy around sex makes me release stress and feel right and warm and wonderful inside? And everything else is wrong everything else is wrong. Nobody out there can define sex in a way that makes you unhappy or feel wrong. I mean, that's just an error in the system. So if sex created you, it's, it has created to some extent a definition of a sex that makes you exhale that anything could be wrong or could be off just because it's definitely unique. I mean, you won't get around that. You won't bypass that fact. My invitation is that we are diving into a small somatic sequence. All you need to do for that is, first of all, feel free. You don't have to join that. If you want, you would have to stand up in a few moments. And you would have to choose some kind of belief system or, mark my words, negative sexual influence or experience which is not a trauma <laughs> and that's important because i myself i'm like yay i can do a healing exercise with whole body shaking let's take my worst nightmare don't take your worst nightmare tonight don't take that don't take the worst nightmare of your mother take something small it's just a small layer of shame it's just something where you try to hide from your parents that you are masturbating or anything like that. Just please not something traumatic because those ones who want to feel the, the who want to heal the fastest are like in, in the most loops of re-traumatization. So learn from my experience and don't go there. But if you want to take notes for a moment on a situation that has hurt you, on a kind of breakup that you didn't fully digest, until now or a kind of negative sexual experience or belief system if you are a man if you are a woman if you are any other sex there are myriads tons of belief systems and mes messages that are just wrong about your sex and they are just an insult for the walking intelligence that you are and all of us have bought that all of us have written that in our nervous system. So maybe choose one of those things. And even though your mind is smart and knows it's nothing to be ashamed for, that's completely normal, take something that still can hit you. And you can write that down if you want. So this is us taking a drop of water from the ocean of what you have learned about sex. All for the sake of our project, unlearning what you learned. And we want to approach what you learned from those small examples that you are aware of. Write one of them down. That's the thing for now. And coming from the idea that 
us feeding tonight our nervous system with the medicine of whole body shaking as whole body freedom is something like putting a magnetism onto the next drop of water from this ocean and the next one and the next one. And it, it will draw from your subconscious. It will draw from your collective inheritance. It will draw the forgotten stuff as well into your awareness, into your shaking. And then vicious circle by vicious circle by vicious circle by water drop by water drop by water drop, we will shift this ocean. We will fly in this upward spiral. So that's the thing for tonight. I think because we are talking about embodied sexuality, it's a lot about sensing. It's a lot about movement. It's a lot about en energy instead of understanding and doing some kind of mindful exercise with that. Whenever you feel unsafe, open your eyes. I'm fully here. Peter is fully here. We are fully here. And um, otherwise, let's see what happens. Okay. All you need to do for now is standing up and making sure that you have some space around where you can move. And um, I just want you to be able to listen to what I'm saying without being busy with the acoustics. So maybe you have to adapt something in your microphone or anything. And then if you want to follow my words, stand up, maybe even turning away from the screen, just forgetting the screen, the screen time, the listening for a moment. Turning away from the screen, yes. Okay, put your feet hip distant on the floor and relax your knees, almost opening your knees. Great, closing your eyes, rubbing your hands until you feel the warmth of your hands. Rubbing them and then put your hands onto your eyes. Opening your mouth and breathing now through your mouth. Inhaling, exhaling through your mouth. Not your nose for now, just your mouth. <sighs> Inhaling, exhaling, in a way that you can hear your breathing, hear your breath. It's a very audible breath. It's a physical breath for you. <sighs> Relaxing your eyes into the darkness. Relaxing your forehead, your neocortex into the darkness. Relaxing your thoughts into the darkness, allowing them to drop downwards like a drop from the ocean, downwards, easy. Just letting go as if becoming more lazy in your head. Great. Darker, slower, lazier in your head. Relax your jaw. Breathing through your mouth, relax your mouth, throat, vocal cords. You can sigh with every exhale if you want. <sighs> Stay with your eyes closed, super relaxed eye muscles, as if you have gone blind and you will never be able to see again. It's okay, just be blind. Just stay as the blind one for the moment. Perfect. Drop your hands. Hands landing on the level of your pelvis. Arms hanging loosely. Relax your arms. Now start shaking in your arms and fingers. Shake in the joints, the bones of your hands and fingers on both sides. First of all, just this, I could say gesture. It's not a gesture, it's already some kind of whole body shaking medicine. However, shake your arms. And first of all, we are doing this for one minute, even though it might become boring for you. Um, we are doing this in a way of, I have no control. I try to figure it out. I try to fix it. I try to become the perfect, a partner or boyfriend or husband or mother or whatever and it kind of didn't work whatsoever and wow shaking it's tonight giving up into the shaking shake your hands yes 
whatever you tried to figure out, shake it all off. There is no hope on earth. There won't be an answer tonight. There is no wisdom to gain. There is no healing that we can chase. Yes, perfect. Now I want you to add the shaking in your knees and important in the shaking of your hands. Shake your hands in a way that your elbows are shaking as well. I don't want you to hold onto your elbows. Shake your elbows as well. Now start shaking in your knees. Shake in your knees. There are a thousand ways of shaking in your knees. All of those ways have some kind of frequency of almost like, whoa, soft knees. I'm kind of afraid. Let's be a little bit of afraid. All of us, I think at least most of us, didn't have the ideal sexual role models as a child or as a teen. So br breathe deeply with your whole body, open your throat, open your vocal cords, sighing with every exhale if you want and shaking your knees. We have, we have experienced overwhelming stuff where we had to figure it out on our own. Our first boyfriend, girlfriend didn't know either. So we were kind of left alone in this wild, wilderness of the outer world with these weird conventions and ideas and concepts shake your knees i want you to shake your knees a little bit more a trick around shaking is shaking five percent more than i than what i want to be shaking as a level of intensity shake a little bit more it's almost us pushing our energy to the front and now shake your head as well from side to side you're shaking your hands and your arms. You're shaking your knees and your legs. And you're shaking your head from one side to the other. Feel your head brain. Feel those belief systems in your head. Shake your hair. Woo, yay. Great, shake, bam, you're doing great. If you're having fun, have fun. That's the medicine. That's the medicine, the aliveness medicine. You are doing great, go for it. Everything that you do not need anymore is allowed to become chaotic in the shaking. Whole body shaking. You can also add something else to the trembling in your knees. And these are small steps, maybe at the same place that you are standing at, but moving your feet so that your nervous system is having this information of, wow, I can cross the desert. You have been crossing the desert with this nervous system for a few million years. So run, you are so fast. Run, you are needed when you are afraid with your speed, with your high speed. Yes, move, move your hip joints. Move automatically in your genitals. Relax your genitals into this high speed of whole body shaking. It's not, oh my God, whole body orgasm and the rest is just me being stuck in my head. This is whole body aliveness. This is so much more like embodied sexuality is not sex. It's just full on aliveness. So I ask you to become fully on alive with the shaking. Wow, yay, such a wonderful energy with you. Shake your head. If there is anything like a belief system or a stressful thought at the moment, shake it in your hands, shake it in your head, shake it in your butt, shake it in your feet and run through the desert. Run, run, run. You have been saving your life so often so often so often go for that go for that yes wonderful 30 more seconds with that so that's not so much go for that push yourself into this woo, -woo i am fully here and this this is meant to be embodied sexuality and embodied non-sexuality as well this amount of freedom, this amount of spontaneity, this amount of playfulness, this amount of innocence, of power, of joy. Yes, you are doing great. So for now, follow my words. Wonderful. I ask you to stay with your eyes closed and super, super, super present with your sensations. Slow down the shaking. Stay open in all 360 joints in your body open in all joints open them up open them up allow your energy to be flowing through your whole body 
breathing deeply, breathing deeply, ah, inhaling, exhaling. I ask you, how are you standing now? Stand in this way. How are you breathing now? Be fully on alive. Breathe in this way. Sense every cell in your nervous system. Sense your level of energy. Sense your idea and concept about yourself. How busy are you with fixing yourself? How busy are you with your problems at the moment? Great. And then from here with closed eyes, follow my words. And now I want you to recall the situation that you took notes about. The situation that has put some kind of negative impact into your nervous system. The situation, the influence, the past experience, the small misunderstanding, the secret belief, the layers of shame around watching porn or whatever. Just recall what you chose to play with tonight and think about this trigger. Recall it here. And I even ask you to not only think about it, but believe in it. Be in, yes, that's wonderful. Be in this situation. I want you to pay super close attention to what is changing now in your body. What is changing in your posture? Allow that to change. What is changing in your breath? Allow that to change. Don't, don't learn, just endure this moment of energetic depression. Yes, yes, that's great. More important, what is collapsing in your body? Are you still connected to your legs? Are you still connected to the juice in your arms? If not, allow them to be empty. Allow them to be numbed. What is happening in your energy level? What is happening in your sense of worthiness, of connection or support in this moment? Which atmosphere are you creating around? All of that is coming from your nervous system. It's not a belief in your head. It's a frequency in your whole body. I ask you to recreate the frequency of something that you learned as consciously, as present as you possibly can. Just as you're doing it right now. And now I want us to be the caretakers for our nervous systems and guide them back into the freedom that is available nowadays. You just have to follow my words. Well done. Inhale. <gasps> Exhale. Oh. Inhale together with me. <gasps> Open your mouth. Exhale with a sigh. Oh. Hear your sound. One more time. Inhale together with me. <gasps> Exhale. Oh. Inhale together with me. Lift your shoulders. Exhale. With a sound, shake your arms again. Start shaking in your arms, inhaling, <gasps> exhaling. Start shaking in your knees. Wow, back to aliveness, back to whole body shaking. Now shake your head from one side to the other. And I ask you to follow your nervous system into whatever direction is happening. Right, perfect. Follow your nervous system. Trust your body. Move your feet. You can run wherever you are. You can run. You can tremble. You can jump around. You can open your arms. You can fly. You can dance. You can scream. You can curse. Whatever is needed. Allow your hip joints. Allow your belly brain. Allow your head brain to be set free. Just for this instinct of movement. If you hand yourself over to your instincts. It's just a matter of time. All of us washing those layers of trauma from our nervous system. Providing such a fruitful future for future generations. So move, move, move. I want you to be become a vibrating acupuncture needle. I want you to be a whole body system, a washing machine for collective stress. Go for that. You are wired for that. You are wired in a crisis. You are wired for a crisis. You are wired for change. 
You are not wired for stagnation. Go for change. Go for chaos. Go for shaking. Go, go, go. Go for shaking. Move your head from one side to the other. Go wild. Yes, you are doing great. Breathing deeply, inhaling more than you are exhaling. Inhale more, inhale more. I want you to inhale more and I want you to shake 5% more than you want to be shaking. You are doing so great. Let's have a whole body aliveness shaking party tonight. Thank you for everything that you're contributing. You're doing so great. Wow, yes. Move, move, move. Yay. Wonderful. Breathing deeply. Set your nervous system free. Trust your body. Trust every impulse. Trust every movement. Every free movement is medicine, medicine, medicine. It's the path of energy meeting the path of the mind again. Yes, yes moving, shaking, vibrating. This is the unlearning. This is the unlearning. I do not have to be stuck in the stuck stuff that I took over from past generations. I can move on. I can make every vicious circle turn into an upward spiral. I can take every trauma and awaken the even more to presence and consciousness and aliveness right now, nowadays. Breathing deeply, celebrating everything that you are sensing. You are doing great. Staying open and loose in 360 joints in your body. Slowly, slowly, as if having swum into the ocean. Allow yourself to be carried, carried back to the beach by very soft and loving waves, just softly, vibrating, trembling, sensing everything that you sense. Maybe there are emotions, maybe there are images, and maybe not. Whatever is happening, it's just so incredibly perfect on point. Trust your nervous system, move your body, allow it to rest, And one more time, standing there with all your loving, full-on presence for yourself. Closed eyes, rubbing your hands until you feel the warmth. Covering your closed eyes with your hands. Allowing the darkness to flood into your eyes, eyeballs, eye muscles, neocortex bones of your forehead, temples, whole limbic system, reptilian brain, everything sinking into this dark ocean, black liquid, inner blindness and openness. Dropping downwards, just because it's too much effort to holding everything up, giving up in the most peaceful way, being found by the truth instead of achieving it, being found by the seeing instead of deserving it, deserving nothing, just being found, reminded, Doing less than nothing. Allowing your nervous system to rest and integrate in the space of not knowing and unlearning of false knowledge, which has never been about knowledge, but just about confusion and trauma. Just having exhaled a layer of that, allowing it to settle down in your nervous system in terms of aliveness. Opening your hands, moving them a little bit in space. <gasps> Inhaling, stretching your neck. Wow, making a few funny faces. It's not too serious. No, not at all. Wow. Meow. Move.
moving in a little bit of weird, unique way, a little bit off. So not normal, so to speak. Wow, opening your eyes, rolling around with your eyes, roll around on this globe with your eyes. Wow, okay, thank you so much for your trust, jumping with me into this three-phase sequence. By the way, you can apply that to everything that makes you freak out. You shake, three minutes, favorite playlist song, three minutes shaking, just for voluming up your energy. Then from there, you go into the rough full stop with your trigger. You think about the belief system, the problem that you have. Deeply believe it, deeply embody the disembodied stress. And then, <gasps> shaking in your whole body for at least five minutes with a song that's even better than the first one. Then a minute of resting in the dark ocean of not knowing and chaos, having unlearned the false knowledge. And then you are here again. Oh, I'm fit, but my body can't keep up with how much shaking I feel. Oh, Laura, that's exciting. You feel the shaking. I mean, it's not at all about you have to shake so much because I'm saying that, but if you feel a lot of shaking, your nervous system might, might want to release so much that's happening or that might have happened in your nervous system. Uh, so thank you for sharing and allow it to tremble whole body shaking. Laura, no, you know, it's not a technique. It's almost the whole body shaking is the instinct. And when I say close your eyes and shake, we are offering your instinct, the little finger, hoping that your instinct is taking your whole hand, taking over with your instincts. So when you say, I feel the shaking, it's like, boom, yay, wonderful, because your body took over. At the same time, we have to honor that us as humans, we learn that we have to be in control, even though that's at the end of the day, the currency for suffering. However, we still might like, oh, I don't stop shaking. Laura, it's the most perfect thing that can happen to you at the same time when you want me to help you stop the shaking. I can definitely do that, okay? So let me know when anything becomes too much. Even though it's a healing thing, we don't have to take an overdose tonight. And I'm definitely here for grounding and relaxing the human and the cultural part as well. Thank you for sharing. Very, very courageous. Beautiful reset. Yes, it's all about a cultural reset. Ah, it's so easy. Oh. Ah, it's complex and wonderful and not at all complicated. I need a shower and a nap. Kevin, go for that. I mean, sorry, maybe Peter, you are the one uh, allowing people to go for a nap or shower or, or both. But uh, yeah, for me, that would be, Kevin, if this is what your nervous system tells us, who are we? Hmm, Kevin can go. <laughs> Kevin, you can go. Mm. Mm. Anything? Do I need a, a hall pass? I think that's kind of stoic terminology. I, I don't say anything. I'm just a guest. <laughs> Flavius, there is a support from, uh, Kevin, there is a support from Flavius around showering and during a stoic talk. Anything more, anything you are curious about, anything around, I mean, that's the basic recipe for let's unlearn. And even though 
I do not know so much or maybe nothing at all about your sexual conditioning and you do not know so much about my one except the thing that it hasn't been perfect in many <laughs> uh, aspects um yes it's such a unique way of reminding ourselves to our unique sexual essence at the same time this is the most common thing on earth so the stuff that you feel the most alone with is the stuff that you are the, la the least alone with. It's like there is no wound being shared on a broader level, on a wider level than this one. We are so wounded. Like we are, we are created and then have to get along in a world that is so not about unleashing the wild, wise freedom inside on so many levels. And yes, we can access this ocean of suffering from the angle of sex or the angle of freedom of speech or freedom of identity or whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's this, it's this sacred rage of destroying what, have we, what we have put in the way. Finding it, sensing it, going through the fear, going through the trembling, going through the burning down burning it all down, killing it all, and then being found by something underneath when we have let go of hope. It's a kind of serious, playful game. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay, Peter. Peter, oh, you are asking everybody. So just in case that I have no idea what to answer, I will hand over to everybody just saying what advice to give for couples to practice. Wow, wait a moment. What advice to give for couples to practice embodied sexuality trauma healing together? Okay, yeah, I have a hardcore homework for couples. <laughs> I mean, it's really hardcore. I tried it myself. It made me freak out. It's called, or maybe maybe you, you have already heard about the word slow sex. It's like la la li, la 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 li. It's like wellness. It's not at all about wellness. So if you are with a partner and both of you want to unlearn sexual conditioning, you want to kill it all, what you can do is managing a sex position where your genitals can rest in each other without you being busy with... Uh, I have to hold on to here. So a situation where you can fully let go. Maybe, sorry to say, like binary code, man on his side and woman on her back. So then the penis and the vagina can relax in each other by you doing some kind of knot with your legs. You will definitely figure that out. And then you are doing nothing. You are just doing nothing. If you then want to take a nap, take a nap. No movement, no erection, no orgasm. <laughs> in, my, in my case, I was trying that. I was like, no sensation. I'm numb. I'm dead. I'm completely asexual. Oh my God. This was such a nightmare for my sexual ego. However, that is cold turkey for your sexual conditioning. In the beginning, I guess even more for men, If you have been brought up with a typically male conditioning, there is so much abuse of your sex when it comes to performance, when it comes to holding on to erection or anything. Guys, the sooner you let go of this fear, the better. And I think the safest way of letting go of the fear around your erection is allowing it to end during sex. Like die, allow this to happen. Do not run around with, oh, I let it go, I let it go, I'm not afraid, mm -mm -mm. and then, oh, oh my God, thank God. No, let it die, let it go. Have a penetrative sex without movement, without any kind of penetrative masculine aspect in that, and die this sexual death. Die this ego death. Go through this trembling. Go through all the unworthiness having been put onto your sex for 6,000 years of a man is a man when he is, when he has a heart on. I mean, sorry, that's almost like you raping yourself. You contempting yourself. Don't do that. So that is a healing practice for couples. Do that a few weeks, every day, 30 minutes. 
you will love each other, you will hate each other, you will cry, you will sleep a lot because normally sex is a very stressful thing in our sexual conditioning. And after that, the vagina unlearned to contract. You unlearned to produce orgasms. You unlearned to um, being busy with your erection. You just resensitize your genitals because you stop repeating the patterns that just add layers of numbness. It's, it's totally hardcore. <laughs> I may be hard case, however, it's hardcore. And it definitely works because it hands the whole thing around sex over to the wisdom of your nervous system and the pace of your nervous system. And what it opens up over time is a whole body bath in connectedness and nourishing sexual energy, which is not about, yay, orgasm, and now we can fall asleep. But it is about, the ocean is drawing you into its depth and more and more and more. And this is not about time. It's not about time. I think this is a kind of being found by, by a togetherness of the essence of sex. Mm. And whatever unfolds from there, maybe then after these weeks, sacred weeks of cold turkey, of movement, it might come from your nervous system and not your idea of having to produce something. Mm. Yeah, that's what I want to share for now, for this sequence. The simple being together and melting in each other and relaxing and resting in each other of your genitals will set free the whole nervous system's wisdom and the cooperation of two nervous systems. And a wonderful test question, I think I already mentioned that around sex is how do I feel afterwards? Because after these sexual meetings, you might feel very, very, very different, even though maybe it brings up hidden rage from the past, but you will feel very different, very, very different, especially over time than when you normally had sex. So just comparing the afterwards and deciding which style of sex am I living for? Because, um, or maybe solo sex or sex with whatever, just a thought, whatever it is, but it's your definition of sex and it has to make you feel right and it has to set you free and it has to make you happy. Everything else is a bad definition for sex. So, oh, okay, two questions. Oh my God, your questions are so awesome. Peter, can you help me choose? I will go just, just because I saw it now first. Laura, Laura Cleveland, that's so sweet. I go deeper and deeper into my body and then sometimes I get stuck at this inner exhaustion at this deep, I don't want to. Any suggestions how to work with this part? Yes, paradox intervention, Laura. First of all, this I don't want to, in most cases, it's not an inner resistance. I mean, there is no inner resistance in you, but there is an inner instinctive system, which is very much on point. It doesn't feel safe to go deeper into my body. And going deep into your body is a very unsafe thing because you have been immersed, you have been your whole body when you have been born. And then things were a little bit overwhelming just the adult world around just having to be normal just having to fit in wow that's a cultural collective collective uh, developmental trauma so yes you going deeper and deeper into your body it's a matter of time until all of us hit the mark the marker or the level of it's not safe to go deeper so to some extent acknowledging wow okay it doesn't feel safe to go deeper at the same time there is a part that wants to go deeper and it's what I compare this to is you are, you are hitting this marker, this limit, this level, and then you start your surfing. Then you start your trembling. Then you start your sounding. Then you are like in your body and then you don't want to go deeper. You don't have to go deeper, but you stay there and breathe there and move your head there. Oh. I'm kind of deeper in my body. This moment of playing, of kissing the boundary 
it's it's not oh in a resistance it's not going against you but at the same time it's not this is not the last word in your nervous system it's it's a marker it's a change of the pace but it's not the end of the trip sometimes this fear comes up once the aliveness and freedom starts to feel really full i will be attacked or taken advantage of as a woman when i feel free laura yes welcome in the club that's on point that's just i mean everybody eventually it it comes down to i have less problems when i'm holding on to my problems than when i'm free of problems like get rid of whatever problem in your life you will hit again and again and again the same matter of fact at the end of the day you freak out when your problem is gone because then the real stuff starts yes we have been abused for being free we have been abused we have been punished for believing in ourselves not you and me but every 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 boy and every girl and every other sex since 6000 years and the collective burden matters it speaks to you in your nervous system do not underestimate the currency for aliveness slash suffering on the other side and go for that the word in trauma therapy is titration drop by drop by drop but just you you did perfect tonight just like that your favorite playlist with that and it is deadly serious breaking free even though also when you feel that free life matters so much to us we don't want to lose it we don't want to waste it we don't want to let this planet die everything is so close to our heart and it's like i just wanted a little bit more of honeymoon and pleasure it's like there is such a wonderful poem and i can't translate it not at all but it's like all we dared to ask for is a day is a holiday excursion or a um, holiday trip a one day trip to paradise but life delivered an unlimited abonnement for garden eden are we the ones returning it because we wanted something else or are the, are we the ones growing into that and that's such a bloody challenge and it's so worth it thank you thank you thank you so on point and i'm so happy that you brought up these questions because even though i'm now talking very much to you i'm not talking at all to you i'm just talking to the nervous system which is trembling in this wow freedom i am you and oh, that's so spooky so the more we are the easier yeah mm. oh stoic people thank you for your courage what a wonderful club wow you are amazing thank you for your work thank you for your studies your dedication your being serious about the depth yeah Peter, I'm stretching over, so sorry, here we are. Peter, one, one um, question. Could you copy paste the chat and send it to me via email? I would love to read everything that you shared, if that's okay for you. But, and I feel like, wow, I missed so much from your sharing. I might even maybe be allowed to come up with another kind of comment after that for this question or that question. And, um, yeah, Peter, would that be okay if you sent me this back via email? Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll send it uh, after the session. And Perfect. is there any place where people could uh, contact you or find your work that you would point them to? I'm so easy to find, even though I'm fully into embodiment. To me, the internet is a collective nervous system. So let's embody all of us in the collective nervous system internet i'm easy to find in the internet as long as you can spare my last name stefani elanstefani.com for example is my website but you will definitely find me and 
um, there is a contact form with my website so you can easily reach out to me. It's I'm really easy to find. I'm really, really so happy hearing from you and how your shaking journey is, is going in your life and how you're applying that to your orgasmic unlearning of just everything. Orgasmic killing of concepts. Mm. Yeah. Could we hear the poem in German, the original? Uh, yes. Der Kunde wollte nur einen kurzen Ausflug in den Garten der Lüste. Wir lieferten aus Versehen ein unlimitiertes Abonnement fürs Paradies. Fehlbuchung. Irrtum. Storno. Beautiful. So that's, that's a sad end in German. In German, the German ones, of course. I'm sorry, I admit. The German ones are... Like, no, no unlimited abonnement for Garden Eden, no. And then they resend it. That's the German end. For you, I left it open. I think you have more courage. <laughs> yeah, thank you for asking. Beautiful. Um, so I think that's a good place to end. Uh, I'll make some closing announcements in a moment. But uh, Elan, thank you so much for coming to Stoa. We'd love to have you back. That was a beautiful session. Mm. Thank you so much. Bottom from my heart. For this invitation and your openness and just how how you are here is a very special there there is a i don't know there is a kind of maturity or steadiness in your presence that's very very safe and full yeah mm. so feel free to come back anytime uh, mm. i'd love to have you uh, feel free to check out our website, which I'll include on the uh, video description as well if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, our next Patreon event is Laughter Yoga, um, which is next uh, Monday, September 13th at 10 a.m. So you can check that out. Uh, so that Even means- yoga isn't about seriousness. Oh, my God. Yay. There you You're go. getting it on. Bam. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a, have a great time. Thanks for coming to the store today. Thank you so much.